Hey everyone, it's Moose. Uh, today we're doing another tier list because uh, I lo just love doing tier lists. I got a comment on one of my last ones to do a relic tier list. Uh, so here we are. I've separated out uh, S to E. So I'm just going to briefly say what each section means um, just so it's clear for everyone. Um, S tier are just going to be the absolute broken relics. They're going to be the ones that every civilization should pick up every single time, no matter what or just some really busted ones. Um, A tier are either just really, really good relics that aren't quite S tier, or ones that aren't for everybody, but they should be picked up for those kind of specialist gods because they are just that good that just bust them wide open. Uh, B and C um, are going to be pretty similar. So I think B will be ones that are either good relic for everybody but not quite as strong as S and A and then ones that have quite good effects for the certain gods and then C is just a weaker version of that so ones that have eh, all right effects for everybody or a kind of really situational use then D will be the very situational like it's not really useful for most people most gods but if you do have that time then it's useful and E is they're just awful they are really don't pick them up um unless they really fit your specific situation but in most games they just won't so let's let's get into it um i don't know exactly what all of them do by percentages um so i've got my trusty cheat sheet here with me so i'm going to be reading out what they do because i know that everyone doesn't know exactly what each of them mean um and then let's get started so the first one is easy to know what it means because it's called a pair of golden lions so a pair of golden lions is they come at the temple they respawn every one minute and when they're killed they respawn after a minute so they are basically two free units that you get every minute um, they don't take up any population and they're just good this is straight in the s tier relic this is a solid solid relic this should be got on every god it's basically if you can imagine the early game uh you uh, are you go and get the relic as you advance you send your hero oracle out or your jason whatever you pick this bad lad up you have your first fight with like it's like five hoplites versus five mamillo whatever if you have two extra lions yeah the lions are pretty weak but you have two extra units obviously in the late game it kind of falls off and becomes a little bit pointless because you've got these lions that are really slow and don't really tank much but in in the early game those extra few swipes of a sword that the lions kind of tank is pretty useful so that's straight in the s tier straight in the s tier relic uh the next one is we've got the anchor of ra so this one is provides a trickle of 2.4 favor per minute um which i mean it, it doesn't really sound like a lot so say you were to get this at the five minute mark which is when you're going to pick up most of these relics because you're going to do the advanced time. It'll be four minutes, five minutes, between four and six minutes, maybe. Um, the Anchor of Ra, so 2.4 favor. So say by 15 minutes, you'll have 24 favor. So that's probably enough for one myth unit. So you get like one free myth unit every 10 minutes. I mean, it's okay. It's it's not it's not great. I mean, obviously you still got to pay the food, wood, gold cost, whatever, but I'm, but I'm going to put it in that kind of it's an okay effect um if you see it and it's the best relic you you might as well pick it up you know you've got the time to do so but it's not really that good I, maybe we'll put it c tier i am going to change some of these right at the end um anyway so just in case i get them slightly wrong for what i think so the next one is anvil of Her hephaestus i don't i can never say that guy's name anvil of vulcan he's much easier in roman um so armory technologies are 10 percent less expensive so basically your role plays thor obviously if you are thor and you get this too they just become dirt cheap um or if you're one of the greek civilizations that gets the negative cost anyway then obviously this is a really good relic and it goes straight in the s tier but i would just call this a 10 percent. so they're like the first ones like 200 food to 200 gold to they're like 180 I'd say it's B tier. It's like it's a it's a pretty good effect. It isn't one you're like, oh, I must have this, because obviously it becomes the late game. You're probably if you get all of them, you're saving a couple of hundred of each resource more than likely. Maybe not even that. So yeah, B pretty decent. 
Um, Armor of Achilles is next. Infantry have 5% less vulnerability to hack damage. So basically, infantry are slightly better. So this is where I said about the B and C tiers are only if it's relevant to your situation. So not everyone is going to build infantry right at the start. Obviously, in the late game, most do anyway. Um, but you don't need to go for an infantry strategy like if you're Poseidon or whatever and you want to go for horses. Uh, so I'm going to put this B. It's pretty It's pretty good. I mean, obviously, if you're going for full infantry and you're against, like, Norse, then this is an insane relic. Um, but, yeah, it's just a little thing that kind of helps out. And then in the late game, it probably does a lot because you have, like, a slight extra bit of armor on everyone else. So pretty, pretty good. Not bad, pretty good. Which is always a solid B tier. Arrow... Arrows of the Alpha. Towers, fortresses, middle strongholds, hill forts, palaces, and town centers. Glass mouthful. Deal 20% more damage. I mean, it's just good, right? Like, when do you when do you not want this? You're basically always going to be building fortresses, migdals, town centers. Uh, so I wouldn't say it's like an insane relic, like a pair of golden lions where it's like, damn, I need this. But 20% extra damage why not it's useful for everybody which is the s and a tiers um yeah why the hell not you could go for some crazy strategies you could go for a tower rush and just pretend you're playing the other age of empires games it's not so good in mythology um because villagers do extra damage to towers maybe they should put that in the other games uh black lotus here we go here we go villagers collect food from farms 10 percent faster just a solid relic right you're gonna farm at some point it's inevitable because there's only a certain amount of hunt even on the fishing maps you obviously got to get uh, get it eventually s tier relic this is just it gives you a, re a really good boost um and you're always going to want to pick that up extra eco for free why not extra extra 10 percent if you get loads of villagers on it it's just solid relic not much to say about it, really. It's just good. It's just good. Uh, blanket of Empress Zoe, or Zoe. I'm not sure who it's referring to there. Uh, oh, it even says here, possibly named after several Byzantine Empress named Zoe. So, <laughs> whatever. Uh, I'd, I'd call it Zoe. Okay. Buildings take 20% less crush damage. So, in, in, in the late game, people have siege. Um, there are some uh solid improvements uh, that you can get going through certain gods anyway so if you had that with this then it'd be insane like i'm sure some sun-dried mud brick does something similar and there's one of the atlantean ones that i'm not sure of the name of because i still think of them as a new um so i don't know it all uh but i would call this this is just a solid b tier relic so this is a it's going to be useful later on you don't have to rush out and get it it isn't one where if your opponent gets it you're like oh you're kind of devastated um but it's just just helps out just that little bit oh dear now we're coming up to the big lad so blue crystal shard so if you don't know you might have heard of it from uh, some of the casters that cast some of the pro games um blue crystal shard is one of these things it doesn't do what it says so i'll just read it out it's gold and wood gather rates are increased by five percent but it isn't so I'm going to link below a Reddit thread, uh, which has a link to a Google Doc, which basically goes through what each of the upgrades do. And Blue Crystal Shard basically doesn't help with wood, but just because of how the animations work. It doesn't help with wood unless it's a certain upgrade and only slightly helps with gold and really helps dwarves for some reason. I, d I really don't know why. I mean, it it's just how the animations work and it's only five percent so it's not really a, a big deal um i've actually had a look at that sheet recently and i was thinking about doing a breakdown of it in like a really simple guide of this god should have this upgrade because it's a really useful sheet but it's kind of hard to read if you're not used to seeing data like that i mean that's kind of my day job so it's you know it's good for me to see but if anyone wants to see that let me know but blue crystal shard is actually a c tier relic it it does very, very little. Um, maybe for the Atlanteans, where they just get the straight 5%, maybe it's a bit better. Maybe it's like an A-tier relic. Um, but for the 
other sieves where you just don't get that bonus. It's just not not as good. Uh, boots of kick everything. So this is one I do know straight off the bat. Boots of kick everything is hero units move 10% faster. So obviously we know for Loki it's just S tier. This is if you're a Loki player and you see this, you have to get it as quickly as possible. And if you're against Loki, you've got to get it as quickly as possible so they don't. So their hearses are even faster. But for everyone else, it's just good anyway. Like I'd say this is an A tier relic, an S tier if you're Loki. So it's if your Jason moves faster, your Chiron moves even faster. You know, it's just it's just nice if you're Aranos and you get your super fast heroes anyway, and then you've got super super fast heroes. And then if you're Egyptian, you've got your priests and your pharaohs that are just really slow, and you get one of these. It's just good. Like this is I wouldn't say it's like broken. It isn't like not broken. I mean S tier is like just insane relic. I mean this is it's just good. It's just straight up good. You just you just feel a little bit better. Uh, and that's it, I think. So we're going through the next one. Bow of Artemis. Archer units cost 15% less resources. Trolls cost less. Centaurs cost less. So throwing Axemen and Satyrs cost less. So this is one of those ones that I was saying about that the B and C tier relics are ones that are quite situational. Like, if you're Zeus and you're against another Zeus, and you get this relic, and your centaurs cost 20% less, you're laughing. It's pretty great. And then it goes up to like an A-tier relic, and it's pretty good. Um, if you're just building archers for whatever reason, I don't know whether termers count, but they probably do. If you're just building archers, then again, it's a really solid relic. But it isn't that good considering you don't often build a lot of these units unless you're going for certain strategies. Um, maybe you build a lot of throwing axemen, but I'm gonna I'm 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 gonna, I'm gonna call it C. I'm gonna call it a C tier relic. Um, maybe this one is one that I could disagree with myself on and think maybe it could be a B, B, B or C. Uh, feel free to let me know what you think, but I'm gonna go for a C, C tier relic. Um, Bridal of Pegasus, summon a Pegasus for free one minute after the relic has been garrisoned. When it's killed, you get it back. Um, it says a lot more if you want to read that. Uh, but I mean. It's a free scout, pretty good. We obviously know from Odin's ravens that they're pretty damn good. So if you just get one Odin raven for free, the only thing is it does cost two population. So later on, you kind of want to get rid of it. But when you get up to that 115 population, you just want to take it out um, or just know that you're kind of, you've got one unit less or two villages less than your opponent because you've got this thing. But the very early scouting is just so, so useful. Um, I wouldn't call it S tier, um, even though maybe Odin's Ravens feel S tier, but I'm going to go for A tier. Like, it is just, it's good for everybody, but it's not insane. You know, it's just a, it's just a, a, ni a nice to have. Like, you sit it on your opponent's gold mine or, some, or something like that. It's just, or, or one of their town centers, so you know when they're over there. It's just, just nice, nice to have. Okay, Canopic Jar, Canopic Jar. Of Imseti. I should know how to say that. Canopic jar. Okay. Infantry units are trained 15% faster. Eh. Okay. Just stick another building down, right? Like, it's not like at those levy, levy uh, things from the barracks. You just don't really get them very often anyway. Um, you just, just whack another building down because they cost a lot. I mean, maybe this you're getting it for free, so it's good. Maybe if you're like Odin and you're spamming your Elf Sark that already train quick and now they just train like super quick, maybe it's good. I mean, I just I just don't see this being that good. Maybe somebody can say that I'm wrong and I would happily take that. But I'm going to go for a D tier. This is the first D tier relic. I just don't, ah, just don't, just don't rate it. Just don't rate it. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is why I'm... Not the highest rating. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Maybe I've got some hot takes. Okay. God knows how to say this. Scales of the Catoblapass. I actually don't know what that is. Mythical reference. The Catoblapass is a mythical beast from, the, from Greek folklore. Described to have the body of a bull and, shaggy, and, and a shaggy heavy head. Its gaze or breath could petrify people. Oh, so it's like a kind of... A Gorgon type thing. Okay. So myth units take 20% less crush damage. So it's like 
myth units against myth units, you're going to win. Because myth units do crash damage normally. So if you're like a Cyclops versus a Behemoth, you're going to win. Like, it's like, like, is it good? Or if you're pushing with your Colossus and your opponent's got a Siege Tower on you, like it does less. Moldy doesn't do a lot anyway. I just... I can't... It does something, right? It does something. Is it better than E? Because it, it it does something, and there's some there's some bad relics where we are we are coming up to them. So I think I'm going to go for D. Like it does something. It's like, but you you only get it if it's like the only relic, or you've picked up all the other ones, and you don't need the pressure for whatever reason. Um, next one, the dwarven calipers. Siege weapons cost twenty percent less. Now we're talking. That's better than siege weapon or siege weapons don't do a lot to myth units. Now, a siege is expensive, but you don't get a lot of it, and you have a lot of resources in the late game. You, should, you know, you know I, I do, because I don't spend them very well. Uh, but maybe it's good for players that spend them pretty well. I'm going to go, this is a, it's a C or a B tier, because it's like, it is useful for everyone, but do you always get to late game? No. Do you always build lots? Like, maybe if you're going fast mythics, maybe it's really good. Um, or, I don't know, B or C. Mythical reference. Something about Thor's hammer. Okay, uh, we've got to make a decision. We are going to put it in the C tier. They are expensive. So, say they cost 200 of one resource, so you get 40 off. Like, not bad, pretty good. Um, or that's of each resource. You save 80 resources per one. Something like that. Eh, let's put it B tier. Put it B tier. Can always change it. Now. Now. Eye of Horus. Town centers support plus two population. Like, why not? Every, so every town center has more population. You're basically Isis, because Isis gets plus three. And if you are Isis, this is like S plus 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 tier, because it's just insane. Anyway, that's an S, S tier relic. Everyone has a town center. Even if you just have one, you have two more villages than your opponent. Or if you have three, you have six more villages. Or you have three more units, two more horses, you know, something. It is it is just one of the best relics. It's just easily one of the best. Um, I wouldn't say it's it's not broken, because it's like, how else could you do that? You couldn't just do plus one, because then that's just, it's just not so exciting. I don't know. It's just it's just a good relic. It's just, it just feel, it feels nice to have that one. Um, and you really hate when your opponent has it. Uh, Eye of Ornlu, okay. Uh, Hypatophis, Axemen, Throwing Axemen do 5% more damage. So this is the thing, right? They do no damage anyway. Like They have like 5 damage each, which obviously has a massive multiplier. So if you're going against Norse and you get your Axemen out and you have this, it's really good. Well, 5%, is it really that good? I don't know. Maybe this is one you'd need to kind of see in, in practice. I'm going to put it as a C tier because it's better than like these terrible ones. But I just don't see 5% of a unit that does 5 damage being that good. But maybe the they get like a crazy a crazy boost though, don't they? Oh well, that's it. That's it for now. Nice and easy. Done with that one. Oh, our first E tier. The Fetus of Fenrir. Ah, uh, E tier. They kill animals in a single shot. Now this is the one where it's like... If you're on the maps like uh, Watering Hole or whatever, where there's like elephants and hippos and all that, then it's it's a D tier relic. You know, it's good in the certain situations. But what if you get it on a map where there's none of those? Like you you are saving the efficiency of shooting a giraffe two more times when your villagers are all going to shoot them at the same time anyway. Bear in mind this is five minutes into the game. If you could pick it up at the start of the game and kill a hippo in one shot rather than having to run your guy around the granary or ghost building or whatever, then maybe it's still still awful, isn't it? thing is, when you are Thor, it feels good. It feels good to have that extra shots, because you know that you don't have to worry about your villagers taking extra damage, but I just feel like it's an E-tier relic. It's bad. It's bad. It's a bad relic. Okay, Flagstone of Buhen. Mythical reference, the ancient... Egyptian town of Buhen, known for its fortress. Well, there, there you go. 
So walls cost 25% less. Now even the wiki's shooting it down. Not much of a saving. It's not. Walls don't cost very much. So 25% of not very much doesn't end up being a lot. But it does something. So that keeps it out of E tier. It does something. And you, you, build, you can build walls on every map. Unlike your fetters of Fenrir, really. So I'm going to give this a D tier. This is a, you save pennies, but you save something, you know. Not bad, pretty good. Well, no, not bad, pretty good. It's just not, just not good. Uh, Gaia's Book of Knowledge. Infantry do 300% more damage against Titans. Apparently it says it's good for defending a Titan. So, infantry are barely going to do any damage to a Titan anyway. Because they have like 90% armor. So you're going to end up doing one shot. So the question is, does that mean you end up doing four? Or does that mean you end up still doing one? Uh, something I probably need to test at some point. But Guy's Book of Knowledge goes straight in the bin. Uh, straight in the E tier. Because, um, I mean, not every game has a Titan. And you don't really want infantry anyway. Uh, it says here, too, that I didn't know. It doesn't even apply to heroes. So if you were, like, Hersa, which are like infantry um, heroes, or your Atlantean infantry heroes, they don't count. Because then maybe it, it would do something, right? Your heroes are doing like three damage, so then they do a bit more. But yeah. Straight in the E tier. The bad tier. Straight in the bin tier. Uh, Girdle of Hippolyta. Toxotes. Toxotes. Whatever you call them. Chariot archers, throwing axemen, and Arky, I assume that's Arcus, gain 5% more HP. Pretty good. So this is better than the Bow of Artemis, right? Because it's still affecting your archers, but it just makes yours better than your opponent's. So if you are in that archer ball, is it better to have them better? Or better for them to be cheaper? And I just think it's better to have them with more health. So it's still a situational, because you're not always building archers or throwing axemen or chariot archers, whatever, depending on who you, who you are. Um, but... B tier is where it belongs, because it, it's it's still it's 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 still good. Thing is, these like five percent differences. How often are you going to notice that? Like five five percent of a hundred would be one hundred and five, which is good. But archers have like sixty hit points. So you're getting like instead of sixty, you've got like sixty. Well, depending on how they round it, like sixty two, sixty three. Um. So maybe they can tank slightly more. Um, it would be interesting to see how much this actually does. But on paper, if you've got loads of them, then it should be should should be right, shouldn't it? So B tier, B tier relic. Grognir Odin spear, hoplite spearman of sight Mamillo have five percent more attack. Now this just feels better because you're getting the extra attack on something that has a decent amount of attack, whereas getting five percent extra HP. Are they, are they relevant? So five percent on your hot plates that have like what do they have? Depending on what age you're in, I guess what upgrades. But they've got like 10, 10 damage, eight damage, 10, 10 damage. So maybe they're doing slightly more. So they're getting through a little bit more armor. It's basically like half a copper weapons. Um, so maybe again, if you've got loads of them and you're taking down town center or something, maybe you're going to see 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 the benefit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick it. I don't, I, I don't know about these. I'm going to put them B tier for now. Maybe I'll go back and change them. Now, Harmonia's Necklace. Harmonia, the Greek goddess of harmony and concord. Okay. Ha this um, worker units collect gold 10% faster. So it's basically, it even says here, useful to everybody. Everybody wants gold. And this is something where on on that Excel spreadsheet, whatever it whatever it is, at uh, the Google Doc one. Uh, this affects everybody. So this helps everyone's gold rate, and even by quite a considerable amount too. So it does actually do the 10% faster, and in some cases it even does more. So this is just a good relic. There's just no reason to not get this. It is a, it's a solid boost. It's basically what the eco upgrade should be. They end up being a bit funny. You can check out the sheet or do a video on it. Uh, but I'm going to give this an S tier. Because gold, I mean, you get pushed off of gold so much. So maybe, 
I mean, it's basically one of the win conditions. So if you can mine it quicker, why not? Then if you get pushed off of it 10% of the time, you're fine. You're fine. Just grab the relic. Okay, heart as folly. Scout units gain two plus two line of sight. What a pointless relic. Like, literally, what a pointless relic. Because you can't really get this until you get a hero out. Which, at the earliest, as Atlantean is like two, uh, two, three minutes in. Everyone else is like, the earliest is like three and a half, four minutes, whatever. And that's early. Like, that is, you're sacrificing bits to get those heroes out. And it's just for your scouts. Like, the Greeks, you can't even rebuild that scout. So it's pointless. The priests, after they've done their job of putting obelisks up or, or walking about, they're pretty much done anyway. Um, oracles, they already have 30 line of sight. Do they need 32? Uh, it's just bad. I mean, Ulfsark, maybe. Maybe that's the only one where it's like somewhat relevant. If you're going for like Odin Ulfsark raids, you get plus two line of sight, you can kind of see. But still, even if it was just that, I'd put it as D tier. But for everyone else, it's, it's, a, it's a bad relic. It's just pointless. If you could get it right at the start, it would do something. But mm, weird. E tier relic. Terrible. Now, this is another head of Orpheus, another line of sight relic. So we're going for buildings gain plus eight line of sight. Well, that's different from the one I thought it was. There's another one later. Okay. Plus eight line of sight. Everyone has buildings. Everyone likes to see when the raids are coming. Um, so maybe this doesn't feel feel like an amazing relic to pick up, but I'd say this is an A tier relic. If it's line of sight for buildings, line of sight for anything that's not your terrible scouts, um, then A tier A tier relic. It's just good. It's just good to pick up, but not not broken. Even though eight line of sight is actually quite a lot. Okay, Hera's thunder thunder cloud thunder cloud. Thundercloud shawl. Thundercloud. Okay. The wiki is telling it for me. A moderately useful all-round benefit. I'd say this is a, it's a good relic, right? Because it's all human soldiers. You're always going to be going against a town centre or towers, even if you're going against Norse. So I'd say this is an A-tier relic. It isn't one of these things which is 5% for just archers, 5% for just a certain whatever. It's all human units, which you're going to be building at some point. Even if you don't start off with them, even if you start off with centaurs or whatever, later on you're going to be building your human units. So, A tier, good relic. The Kopesh of Horus. Heroes' damage multiplier against myth units increased by one. It's 100% bonus versus myth units. They word that weird. I mean, technically, it's saying the same thing. 100% bonus versus myth units. So, if you're against someone with a lot of myth units, this is S tier relic. Easy. Your priests do more, your hearser does more, whatever. I mean, I'm, I'm going to put this in, as A tier, because everyone gets heroes. Um, and even if you don't get a heavy myth unit comp, or you're against that, um, it's still good, right? Because they get a free myth unit. So even if they build none, at minimum they get three myth units. So it's just, it's just good. Like, it's always going to be useful. If you're against a heavy myth unit comp like the centaurs, like the... I mean, that's the main one, isn't it? Like centaurs or, or late game. they got fire giants, whatever. Your priests will slightly more than tickle them. I mean, if you if you think about when you go through Nepthes um, with your priests and you get the plus 100%, it just... It's really good. Like, you've noticed a massive difference. So if you could get that on adjacent and Odysseus and whatever, rather than the priests that have three damage, you're going to notice a massive difference. That's an A-tier, A-tier relic. Kithara of Apollo. Worker units move 10% faster. Look at that. Citizens, and I think they move they move 10% faster too, according, according to this. So villagers and citizens move 10% faster. It's an S-tier relic. Everyone has villagers, so it's useful all the all the time. Um, it's just good for getting to hunt spots, it's good for getting your town centres, it's good for running away from raids, it's good for if, you're, yeah, if your hunt's split up, or if you have to move from one gold mine to another, or whatever, it's just, if you're walking, it's good. So we're going to call that S tier. Probably, I'll rearrange these afterwards. I don't know, is that even... 
Is that even the best one? Hmm. That might even be the best relic so far. Well, I don't know. We can we can rearrange them afterwards, but I like Cathar of Apollo and Eye of Horus. Mithril horseshoes. Cavalry units move ten percent faster. Um yeah, I mean, this is just good, isn't it? Because like we were saying earlier with things that are have low HP and they get a 5%, it doesn't feel like a lot. But cavalry units that are fast gain 10% speed. Why Why would you not want that? The issue is, is not everyone wants to build cavalry. Like if you're Atlantean, you can't build cavalry till the Hero Heroic Age. Excuse me. Or Egyptian, you can't till the Heroic Age. So... The Greeks and the Norse really like this relic. It makes it S tier for them because you can straight away get some big raids off. I'm going to drop it down to A just because not everyone can utilize that straight away. And S tier was only for the broken must pick up straight away. A tier was the either really good or kind of situational, but really good in those situations. So that is what a, uh, that is what the Mithril Horseshoes is. It's just good if you have the cavalry and... You can make it work. You, you, If you see this relic, it's the sort of one where you change your strategy. If you see this relic as Greek, you'll go through Hermes and get the upgrades uh, that, that go along with that. The same as if you're Norse, you'll go through, you'll see this and go, oh, that's a, this, is a, this is a Freya game, you know, so you can get your Thundering Hooves, whatever. Now, monkey, monkey Head. So Monkey Head is the same as the Golden Lions, but you get three monkeys. Um... And it says here that they're definitely a bit of a joke. They still tank, right? I mean, they don't tank much. I think they take like one or two shots. To be honest, I've not played a game where I, the monkey head's been in it for a long time. The pair of golden lions seem to show up a little bit more. So I don't know why I haven't seen it. Or But it's like, it's useful, but they're, they are really slow. So they do slow down your, your army. Um... I'd need to see what it does to see if it can go above D tier. But the reason it's not E is because it does something. Like it even says here, they can scout. They can scout. They do their little bits. You leave them on gold mines. You leave them next to town centers. Leave them to patrol somewhere or whatever. And then it's then it's all good. So I'd say, is it better than D tier? Am I going to put monkeys better than D tier? So this is it. If I was like a professional player, where am I going to put this? Um... Maybe I've talked myself into it being C-tier. Somebody could tell me that's awful. And that's absolutely fine with me. Nose of the Sphinx. All buildings have 15% more hit points. Boom. S-tier relic. Everyone's got buildings. You're going to be taking it down. Somebody's going to be attacking your buildings at some point. So why not have 15% more? If you're Hades, this is a broken relic. You're never killing his stuff until you get all your siege out and whatever. It's one of those things, if you put it with one of the ones from earlier, which gives you your extra siege, this, this guy, um, just, just good. This is just, if you if you see it, you're going to get it, because it just gives you a small boost for, for free. Why not? Why not? Odin's Wand, Temple Technologies are 20% cheaper. Sure. I mean, not everyone gets the 20 uh, gets any temple technologies and like not every god really high, uh, highly wants them um so i'm gonna put it's one of those things again if you're going if you're like low-key and you want those really ex expensive technologies um like the one i can picture it with with uh, with the two giants next to each other where your giants train instantly if you're getting stuff like that which is just so expensive or well, loki at all he gets loads of them uh then it's a it's a a b or c relic but not everyone wants them not every strategy involves even any myth units or any text on the temple so we'll put it as d tier oh the o's the o'sberg wagon caravans are 25 percent cheaper and move 15 percent faster so basically you're saving 25 food every every donkey caravan and you need 15% less of them. S tier relic. Surely. This is 
it's one of those things like may, maybe you don't get to that that late game maybe it isn't as important to grab as some of these early ones that affect you early on like you're moving your villagers quicker or your extra gold and food and whatever but if you're getting to this stage and you both start building trade you set a trade route up like yours is just going to be 15 percent better and you'll have spent less less food on it so it's just it's just it's just so good. This relic could be split in two. And you would still pick it up. Pick both of them up. You know, you you would... The 15% faster, you would pick up more than the cheaper. But Brutal. Brutal. Okay. Pandora's box. Myth units are trained 25% faster. Eh, I'm going to go C tier. C tier relic. Again, you don't always build loads of myth units, but 25% faster. I mean, it's quite a lot building 25% faster, especially because myth units are um, are quite slow. So earlier I put the one for the infantry down a bit lower. Um, but I feel like the myth units are just a bit more important to have a bit up in the C tier because they're, they're just slow and it'd just be good to get them out quick. I, I just like the Loki tech where you get them out really quick when obviously 25% faster is not instant but C tier relic I'm happy with a C tier relic Pelt of Argus now this is the one I thought we were looking at earlier Pelt of Argus all units gain six line of sight what that's just good that's just it's good for if you're scouting and you have your raiding cavalry or your hippocon or whatever that have like absolutely terrible line of sight and you just have this relic you can see if if you've got your army and your opponent's army is coming, you can see them before they can see you. Just why not? Ah, uh, now do I put it S tier? Because I don't think it's as good as all the rest of them, but it is one you always want. I'm gonna put it at the start of A tier. Maybe I'll organise these. I mean, oof, does it matter if they're on the same tier? I'm gonna put it here. Hell of Argus, A tier relic. I feel like it isn't valued. Like there's games where you just see it left. I'm like, I'll have that, please. Solid relic. Oh, yes, yeah, so we shouldn't have put it S tier because there's other ones coming up. Pygmalion statue. Four worker units have forty percent more hit points. Like all these little ones here, like your five percent health, your five percent damage, your five percent on wood and gold, forty percent health. S tier relic goes along with the other one, with the with the one that makes them move faster, the ten percent move, uh, ten percent move speed, forty percent health. This one could do with the nerf, to be honest. If you see that, you just that's it. You're not you're not getting raids off, or if you should have killed a villager, you're not now, or if you should you should have killed two villagers, now you're killing one. What a brutal, brutal relic. One of the one of the best in 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 the whole game. Yeah, so Pelt of Argus was Riley, so a bit lower. Oh, well, I've gone... I've gone past something. Ah, no. So on the wiki, it says something about the Reed of Neckbit. And I was like, I've never seen this in my life. Naval Myth Units do double damage. That's ridiculous. They have take they took this relic out. I didn't even know that that existed. But, I mean, that's just that's just dumb. That's just, you win the water. You need half the boats to do the same amount of damage. Obviously, you need more to tank or whatever. But you can have, like, less boats and still win. What a dumb relic. I'm glad they took that out in 2003. Well done, team, 20 years ago. Uh, bet they wouldn't think a guy would be making a video about that 20 years later. Ring of Nibelung provides a trickle of 18 gold per minute. Okay. So in 10 minutes, you get enough for the gold for a myth unit? Yeah. Okay. Why would I put Anchor Ra? That was the one for the favor. Yeah, that's going straight in the same one. It's like, yeah, I'll pick it up if I see it and there's nothing else. And I guess I'll get something out of it. But this just just feels a bit feels a bit naff feels a bit naff i was gonna make a comparison to it's like a club card for the supermarket or whatever it's like you just get you get nothing from what you put into it but might as well might as well use it i guess right it's a terrible comparison but yeah 
it's not very good. C tier. Eh, is it even? Is it better than the favor or is it worse? Because technically it's the same. We just go to it 18 gold per minute. So that would be like 1.8 favor or so. So yeah, it isn't as good. Yeah, let's put it D tier. Let's get rid of that. Terrible relic. But yeah, I mean, if it's there and the only other ones are Fetters of Fenrir, Guy's Book of Knowledge and Hearts of Folly, yeah, get that guy. Scarab Pendant. Ram, Scarabs and Behemoths have their attack multiplier against buildings increased by one. Okay, so 100% extra damage for Ram, Scarabs, Behemoths and Fire Siphons. Okay, so if you're Kronos and you get a Behemoth and a Fire Siphon, it's, it's okay. Um, so nothing for Greeks. So Greeks is E tier. Norse is just the Rams that you barely build unless you go through the guy that increases the Rams. And I go D tier. It's like sometimes it does something, but most of the time it doesn't. Yeah. Shingles of Steel. Now this, this is this is dumb. I don't know who ever came up with this. Houses and manors have triple hit points. Triple. Three times. It's good to raid houses anyway. Because people put them in terrible spots and you're like, that's a free fifty wood and they have to build something. Yeah. I d I don't know if this is controversial. It probably is. I'm gonna put it S tier. I don't care. If I see this relic, I'm 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 getting it. I'm building my houses as a wall and nobody's coming in. Three times. Like we're talking about five percent and 15% being good times 3 brutal ship of fingernails a slightly better version of ring of nibelung C tier I mean is it even again after 10 minutes you get so it's so, sorry should read what it is 24 food per minute so after 10 minutes you get 240 food you get enough for one myth unit all right Actually, that's just going in. That's going in the. That's going in the bin as well. In D tier. Hmm. Okay. Sistrum of Bast. Worker units cost ten percent less, and this is something that sounds amazing, doesn't it? Ten percent less of something that you're building every fifteen seconds. But let's imagine that we've got twenty villagers by the time we. We we managed to pick this up because that's roughly when you're doing it. You advance with fifteen to twenty villagers, depending on your strategy, or whatever. You you you're getting it. You've got sixty villagers left to make. It takes five food off. So six six times five. What are we at thirty. So you save three hundred food total with this relic. Sounds like ship of fingernails. Same guy, except after ten minutes. 15 minutes or so. This guy's still going. System of Bast, D tier relic. Not good. Oh, maybe it's better than that. Maybe these are better than that. I don't know. You guys let me know. Everyone has an opinion on a, on a tier list, and that's my favourite bit. Feel free to disagree with anything. I love I love disagreeing with people's tier lists too. Um Staff of Dionysus. Villager units carry 20% extra food. It says helpful when hunting. Okay. Oh yeah. Atlanteans. E tier. No use for you. Um, just like husbandry, that, that part of it has no use for you either. Staff of Dionysus. So yeah, if you're Gaia, whatever, E tier. If you're everyone else, are you a D tier relic? I just feel like if you're if you're not good at the economy this is gonna this is gonna mess you up because if you get this too early say okay i think you gather 15 food at once i'm pretty sure then if you get husbandry that's plus 20 so that's 35 if you get this guy you're at 55 55 if you don't force drop early that 55 is going to stitch some people up. I know that I shouldn't be judging it off of that, but just for your average person like me. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, it's just D tier. It's just D tier. Maybe it sounds good, but it's just... Maybe with Egyptian, because you get the extra 
boost or like for farming when you get to the farming stages it's, it's good right when you don't need to worry about the force dropping with force dropping it's d uh, without force dropping it's e with force dropping we'll go c we'll go c tier we'll put it we'll put it there uh where are we tail of cerberus we're getting there myth unit special attacks recharge 25 percent faster if you're if you've got those myth units like your mummies your fire giants your frost giants whatever this is insane right if you've definitely got those does everyone have access to something which has that kind of special probably i go beat it it's like if everyone always got myth units that did those things, then it's S tier, right? But not everyone always does, so that puts it down to A tier. Yeah. Or is it A tier? No, I th it isn't as good as these things. B tier. B tier relic. The Titan's treasure. The secrets of the Titan's technology is cheaper. Okay. Whatever. Is that is that relevant? When you get to that stage, you have a lot of income you just you just do if you if you're going for a titan it's because you've you've got a lot or you're purposely going for one then maybe it's useful if you're going like fast titan like atlanteans used to do and whatever maybe it's like a d tier really whatever i'm gonna put it as e tier i don't even know how much you get off i think it's 10 percent. i could be wrong if it's like half then maybe it's good but that's a bit broken e tier relic e tier relic uh, it does something I'm saying if they do something, they're D tier. It does something. Better than Guy's Book of Knowledge, that's for sure. Toothed Arrow. Archer units and ballistas. Ballista. Ballista. Have 5% more attack. Also affects throwing axemen. 5% more attack on something that doesn't have a lot of attack. Well, that looks like it's going with the Gwukanir Odin spears and the girdle of Hippolytus, doesn't it? Sounds familiar. 5% of not a lot is me okay now we're talking tower of cestus towers have 30 percent extra attack and 10 percent extra attack for boiling oil 30 percent extra attack we're talking about five percent here five percent of was like six now we're talking about 30 percent of like 12 or whatever it, whatever the towers do 10 something like that it's an a tier relic right there that's a good increase. People have towers. It isn't just towers, though, is it? Or it's just towers. Mm. People, people have towers. Be fine. We'll be fine. Trios bow. Archers. Have, archer units have two plus two line of sight and range. Now, I used to love this relic. When I didn't have a clue what I was doing, this was my S tier definitely relic. I would only play Isis. Um, and I'd get chariot archers, or not Isis. Or some would get Sekhmet. I'd play Set, Set or Ra, or whatever, and I'd just be hoping that the Trios bow would exist, and then I'd get 26 range chariot archers, and nobody could stop me. But I've heard that this relic isn't actually very good, because it makes them miss more, so maybe that's something that we could test, I could test, somebody could test, whatever. Um, just for me enjoying it i'm going to put it as b tier maybe it's not that good but i i i love that relic i don't know why just your archer standing slightly further away just hits the spot <laughs> god knows why okay wolves have 20 percent more hit points okay wolves wolves are good wolves are good people build wolves 20 percent is a good amount b tier relic you don't I mean, Atlanteans don't really build walls, but that's just down to people not doing it for whatever reason. Okay, cavalry units and chariot archers have 10% more hit points. 10% is a good number. Better than 5. These 5s are coming down. 5% man. These 5% gotta go. 10% up for the B tier. Because chariot archers and cavalry already have good hit points anyway. Like, chariots are going to have the least, and they've got, like, 109 or something like that. Um, I don't know if that's just raw or just normal Isis and set, but whatever. And the last one, the Wedget Eye. Myth units cost 10% less food, wood, and gold. Okay, that's good. Right? Where's the one where they cost less favor? Was that even a relic? Have I made that one up? No, this one we get free favor. 
is good. Mm. Is it? Centaurs cost 200. So it's costing 20 less. Maybe it's good for the early ones. When it gets late, like 300 to 270. Oh, that's, that's good. I would put his B tier. Put his B tier. Oh, this was almost a nice flat line, but it isn't. Let's see if I want to move anything around. But this has been a pretty good tier list, actually. Thank you for suggesting it, whoever suggested it in my other uh, my other video. Um, if you disagree with anything that I said, let me know. If there's any, any other tier list you want to see, let me know. Uh, and uh, uh, the same about the blue crystal shard thing as well. If you're confused by that, I can break it down. That's cool. Okay, see you in the next one.